Any one of the best Southern gospel songs or gospel songs or songs uh, of any, uh, any type ever written uh, is uh, about on my knees and cried holy. Um, and uh, if you know the words of the song, it uh, basically says, I dreamed uh, that I went to heaven. Uh, and uh, it says, when I, you know, when I got there, it says, the angels all met me there. Uh, they showed me around from mansion to mansion. Um, then it goes on in the second verse and says uh, that as I got there, it says, I saw all my friends. Um, and then probably one of the highlights, that uh, one of the things that uh, all believers are looking forward to, it says, as we uh, went around the streets of heaven, I saw Abraham, uh, Isaac, and Jacob, uh, and Mark, Luke, and Timothy. Uh, but then that verse ends with this line, uh, but I said, I want to see Jesus. Uh, and this morning as, we, uh, as we've been working through the second chapter of, uh, of Luke and the Christmas story, uh, we've talked about the shepherds and we've talked about the angels. Uh, we could have talked about the wise men. We could have talked about Herod. Uh, we could have talked about the, uh, the religious leaders. We could have talked about uh, the Pharisees, the scribes. We could have talked about uh, Mary and Joseph. They're are a lot of characters in the Christmas story, and all of them, uh, I think, have a uh, have a lesson for us, and all of them uh, have a, a place for us to uh, to look at and to study and to learn uh, certain aspects of the Christmas story. Uh, but this morning, uh, here four days before Christmas, uh, I'm here to see Jesus, and so uh, this morning we get down to this part, and uh, I, I've been looking forward to this for uh, for over a month now, getting down uh, to this one verse in the 21st verse of the second chapter. Uh, actually, it's uh, a few days after uh, the birth of Christ, as would have uh, been the custom for uh, seven days after the birth of a child, uh, the mother was considered unclean. Uh, and so on the eighth day, uh, they would take the child and go to the temple uh, and there present the temple and the, and the child uh, would be officially named um, and uh, then, being a male child, uh, would be circumcised. And that's what uh, the 20th First verse records for us that on that day, uh, on the eighth day, he officially uh, got that name Jesus. Now, I think most of us know there is uh, nothing much better than hearing your own name. Now, uh, that all depends on how you hear it. Uh, some of uh, some of the youth here today, if you hear it over the PA system at school and it's the principal, um, it's probably not a good thing. Uh, it's probably uh, you know depending on uh, you know if it's the bill collector, it's probably uh, not a good thing. Uh, just uh, for the record, some of you have probably heard about this, and uh, this is free. Uh, if it's from somebody on the phone claiming to be the IRS, they're lying, hang up, okay? Uh, just uh, in case you haven't kept up with that, uh, there was a minister in Charlotte uh, just recently that had been bilked out of over $10,000 uh, by someone claiming that he owed the IRS, uh, and if they tell you you need to go to Walgreens, or CVS and get a money card and get them their money, that's not the way the IRS does business. And so if you hear your name on, uh, on that regard, that's not good. They, they say they're going to send the police to get you. The police don't come get you when the IRS is looking for you. And so uh, if you hear your name on that phone call, that's not a good way to hear your name. But generally speaking, we like to hear our name. It's about the best word in the English language to hear uh, our own name. Many of us, uh, we were named for a reason we, uh, you know, we, we were named uh, for uh, for for somebody uh, for some uh, some particular reason. I uh, I heard one lady say her children all had uh, biblical names. She named one of them famine. Uh, she named one of them hellfire. Uh, you know, she named uh, one of them earthquake. Uh, you know, uh, and I said all of us have. You know, we've been named for a reason. Maybe you were named after a a parent or a grandparent. And how many of you know what your name means? I mean, most a lot. A lot of people, you know what your name means. You know, no, not mud. Uh, you know, uh, you know, we, we, you know, names are important, uh, and uh, you know, uh, you know, there's a reason that we use certain names and don't use others. I will guarantee you. Uh, you know, I, I will. Uh, I, I'm not a betting man, but I'll bet you everything in my billfold. Caleb knows what that means because he tried to get 75 cents from me this morning. Uh, you know, uh, everything in my billfold that you could go out here to Cox Mill High School and they have somewhere in the vicinity of 1,800 kids and I will guarantee you, you could go through the whole row and you won't find a single girl in that school named Jezebel. 
You know, they're, they're just not there. You know, you won't find, go down the male side of the list and you won't find a single young man in that entire group of 1,800 kids named Judas. They, he's just not there. Uh, you know, they, they, we, the names mean something. We use some names. We stay away uh, from others. But there is no name in history uh, like this name Jesus. And this morning, a, a, as we look at this verse, uh, again, I have been, you know, uh, ready for this morning and excited about this morning uh, because I, I knew what I was preaching on for a month now. And, uh, and that's uncommon for me. Uh, but, you know, on the other hand, I, I feel a little bit inadequate because I don't have the time or the talent to cover the uh, this wonderful name uh, of Jesus Christ. So this morning, I'm going to give it my best shot. I want you to see four things uh, this morning about this wonderful name uh, that was uh, given this this child. First thing is uh, the the selection of that name. Uh, And and as we uh, look at that this morning, uh, you know, again, all these other things, uh, you know, the angels, the wise men, all those other things, but the thing that made Christmas, the thing that saved Christmas was the birth uh, of this child. So this morning, we talk about, first of all, the selection of that name. Uh, Again, several of you raised your hand this morning. You know what your name means. How many of you are named after somebody? I mean, there's a reason uh, that you have uh, your name. Uh, You know, that that applies to, I think, uh, probably the majority of people. We're, you know, we we have, uh, uh, you know, we're named for a a reason, for a a grandfather, grandparent, named after, uh, you know, somebody. There's a reason uh, that we have this name. The reason uh, that that we call him Jesus is because the angels appeared to Mary and they said in that uh, announcement to Mary that we're going to call him Jesus. And that name simply means, why was that name selected? Why was that name selected uh, of all the names? You ever thought of all the things they could have named uh, Jesus? There, you know, there were a lot of names. I don't guess any of them necessarily uh, would have been bad at, at that time. Uh, but that name simply means the Lord saves. I think that's the reason today uh, I, I'm not a, a psychiatrist and I can't uh, you know, guarantee this, but I've thought about it a lot. And I think that's part of the reason today that that name is so divisive. It was because what it means. It says, Jesus saves. Well, what does that mean? If Jesus saves, uh, you're either saved or you're not. Uh, you know, it says you need saving. Uh, and, and people don't want to hear that today. They want to uh, They want to think, well, I'm, uh, I'm all right on my own. I'm good enough just as I am. I think about it uh, this time of the year. I, I worked with a lady for a while uh, who around this time of year would make sure, I, I don't know how many times uh, I've heard this, but she would, uh, you'd hear her telling people all the time uh, about uh, buying heating oil, uh, fuel oil for, for old people. And uh, that her and her husband uh, bought fuel oil for the old people. And that meant uh, she was a good person and she was a Christian and she was going to heaven. Uh, you know, uh, and, and it didn't matter how much you tried to reason with her and explain to her, you can buy all the fuel oil in Saudi Arabia. And if you don't know Jesus Christ, you're not going to heaven. Uh, and so this name was chosen uh, for, for, from, the, from heaven above. Uh, I love what Franklin Graham uh, said. Franklin Graham has been often criticized uh, for talking about Jesus and uh, using the name Jesus. And uh, in his book, some of you may have read the book uh, called His Name. He's got one section there, one little place uh, where he says this. Why is it that people can, uh, why is it that when people curse using Jesus' name, hardly anyone notices? But if you speak about him with respect, some people cry foul. What is it about this name that brings such comfort and healing to millions, yet provokes in others such venomous hatred and offense? Let me tell you what it is. It's because that name was assigned by God himself. That's what upsets people about that name. That is the very name of the Son of God. And it says, Jesus saves. And again, when you say Jesus saves, then you're saying that there's a reason to be saved. You're saying that someone needs to be saved. And people don't want to hear that in today's society. They don't want to hear uh, that they need a Savior. They want to think, I'm all right on my own. I'm doing okay. I'm good enough just as I am. Uh, You know, we we have in our mind, you go out, and I I challenge you, go out and start walking up and down the street and ask people, 
people. Uh, are you going to heaven when you die? And, and you'll find out uh, that about 95% of the people in Cabarrus County will tell you, yes, sir, I'm going to heaven when I die. Now, don't ask them why, because you won't like the answer. Uh, but if you just simply ask them, are you going to heaven? Uh, now, on the other hand, go out and ask them about Jesus, and you'll get a lot different response. And, and so the selection uh, of that name, that it was ordained uh, by God Himself. He officially receives that name here at eight days uh, after His birth. But that name was assigned to Him uh, by God Himself. And the angel had already named uh, named Him. And when Mary and Joseph, they went down there uh, and assigned Him that name, they were simply acting in obedience. And we see, first thing is the selection of that name. That's not just an ordinary name. That, that is a name that uh, the Bible tells us is above all other names. That name is a special name. That name is a sign and chosen by God. Probably some of you grew up and uh, you heard somebody in your family, you had a, a, a parent, you had someone saying to you, now, you got to take care of your name. Well, you got to take care of your family name. You know, uh, you know, I, I, you know. There are, you know, I, I guarantee you. Uh, you know, you, you ask Martin, and, and you know, Martin's name's up on the front of that cleaners, uh, and, and that name was his father's name. And, and when he cleans, when he sends out merchandise out of that cleaners to him, you know, that's a representation of his family, his father, and, and that name means something. There are others of you in here. Uh, you know, Tommy, uh, that name out there has got his family name on it. It means something. And, and this name was chosen by God. And so for, one, one of the things I draw from that is we ought to be careful how we use that name. That name's valuable. That's not just an ordinary name. That's not just, you know, it's one thing to talk about Tommy. Now, you might have to take it up with Tommy. But it's a whole other thing when you start t- taking in vain and using carelessly this name that was selected by God Himself. But you see, that selection brings us to this point, and that is the significance of that name. What, what, the, the very significance of that name. What, what, what a, uh, again, a, what, I, I love the words of that song that says, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. There's just something about that name. You know, I, I can't explain it. I, I told you, I, I've been looking forward to this morning, knowing full well I wasn't qualified to preach what I'd studied. Okay? I don't, I, I, I don't, I don't know how to explain it. It's five letters. It's five letters. J-E-S-U-S. Really four letters. You use the S twice. I don't know what it is about that name. I don't know why that name puts a smile. You know, I just sat here and watched. I, you know, I said Jesus and Martin smiled. You know, there's just something about that name, as the song says. You know, there's just something about that name that, that, that brings calm, that brings peace. The Bible tells us there's hope in that name and there's power in that name and there's strength in that name. Uh, blessed, it says, is he who comes in the name of the Lord. You know, there's very significance of that name. You know, when, when we look through time, uh, you know, unfortunately, I guess, or fortunately, there's on both sides, there are names throughout history. You know, there, there, there are names, and many cases, you don't even have to say the whole name. If I say Hitler, I don't have to say Adolf Hitler. You know who I'm talking about. If I say Nixon, I don't have to say former President Richard Nixon. You know, I'm sure there's a lot of people named Nixon. You know, I can say Clinton. You know, you know who I'm talking about. I say Obama. They're, they're names, and, and immediately, those names, they... They, they bring up, uh, you know, Mussolini, Stalin. You know, there are all kinds of names. Elvis. You know, I, you know they're, they're on the good and the bad side. You know, Archie. I mean, there are, you know, they're, they're, you know there's only one Archie in the world. You know, <laughs> there, there, there are names that just, that just I mean, just pop when, when you talk about that name. And, you know, when, when, in, in church circles, you talk about Spurgeon and Moody. And, and, you know, you don't even need to use their whole name. You don't need to say Charles Spurgeon. You just say Spurgeon. You don't need to say Dwight. You just say Moody. People know who you're talking about. And, that, you know, that there are names that, that, that have significance. And there are names that, you know, you, you, you bring up a name. I, you know, there, there are still people today and... Uh, you know, I, I'm dumbfounded by it, and uh, you know, but there's still people today who 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 admire, who look up, and even try to follow the teachings of Hitler. You know, 
And, you know, but on the other hand, you throw out that name, and while there would be some uh, who might would still follow that name, uh, there are others who would be repulsed by that name. You, know, you, you throw out the name uh, of Reagan, and there are some who would say, you know, greatest president ever. And there were others who, who would, you know, just, oh, I can't believe we ever elected that actor. You know, uh, you know same thing, you know, you could probably do that with every president that's ever been elected. You know, bring up their name and somebody would say, yippee, and somebody would say, oh my. You know, you know the, 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 there's something, you know, you don't, you know, that, that immediately just, you know, just does something. There's something about the name Mama. You know, that's an amazing name. You know, I, I know some of you ladies have tried to change it a time or two. You know, I, I said, that when I thought about that when I, when I was preparing to think about, you know, there's something about your name. You know, we love to hear our name, but after a while, you know, um, you know, it's time to hear somebody else's name for a change. Listen, the significance of the name Jesus. No other. None like Him. You know, none. I, I, if you told me they were playing soccer in our front yard, I would go out the back door to avoid it, okay? I thank God on a regular basis none of my kids ever want to play that game. If yours do wonderful. I'm thrilled for you, okay? I'm just telling you, that game's not for me, okay? It looks like unorganized kickball to me. You know, I just don't get it, okay? But I say the name Pele, and most people who don't even know anything about know who Pele was. I know that. Pele was a great soccer player, greatest ever, you know? It's amazing how names work. And I say the name Jesus. Jesus. And there are people in here, that, you know, it's amazing. It, 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 you say that name and you can almost feel yourself just kind of, you feel your blood pressure go down a notch or two. You know, it's amazing. You say that name in some circles and you see blood pressure go up. What a name. No name like it. No name that compares. You know, I'm sure that somewhere out there, there there's been somebody bad named Debbie. You know, I'm sure there's out there, there's a Debbie somewhere that doesn't have a heart as big as our Debbie. You know, I, I'm sure. I pick on her, but I'm going to give her credit where credit's due. I tell, her, I tell you what I tell her in front of everybody. Her heart's bigger than her brain. I say, Debbie, you got to take care of Debbie. You know, she runs around worrying about everybody else instead of taking care of Debbie. That's free. You know, somewhere out there, there's a Debbie. You know, that name doesn't mean the same everywhere. You know, I'm sure there was probably somebody decent named Adolph once upon a time. But there's nobody that compares to the name Jesus. Nobody. Nothing, no one that compares to the significance of that name. Why? Because there is salvation in that name. The Bible tells us that there is not, there, there, it's the only name where there is salvation. He says in, in, in Acts chapter 4, that's what it tells us. It says, neither is there salvation any given under heaven, uh, given by among men, whereby we must be saved. Not might, could, should, but it is the only name of salvation. Listen, again, we, we run around and there are people today who are uh, trying to work their way into heaven, who are trying to uh, pay their way into heaven, but the Bible makes it very clear. There is but one name. That name, Jesus, goes back to the Old Testament name of Joshua, and the word is very simply, again, Yahweh, the Lord, saves. Not the, the Lord is one of the saviors, but the Lord saves. That's it. That, that's the simple truth of that name. That there is no other name whereby a man must, must, must be saved but the name of Jesus. The salvation of that name. And then finally, I want you to see the serenity of that name. There's something about that name. I can't explain it. I, I'm not gifted enough. In fact, the Bible tells me right up front I'm not smart enough. Because it says that it is a peace that passes all understanding. I, know, hey, I, I surrender. I know I'm not smart enough to explain that name. I know I'm not wise enough to share with you the peace that's found in that name. But I can give you one simple illustration. And I, I know I've told you this before, but it's it, 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 it stuck with me over the years. I hadn't been in a ministry long. I couldn't have been, but just a little bit over 20 years old. And the first pastor 
that I really, I, I guess really the first pastor, first pastor I really remember um, was in the hospital up here in Cabarrus in one of those old rooms back in the day. And I know now what I didn't know then was I was way over my head when I went in there to talk to him. He was in agony. He was groaning. He was moaning. He was squirming. He was writhing around. And he was in pure agony. To be honest with you, I don't even, I know I don't know now, and I don't even know if I knew then what was wrong. But he meant a lot to me as a kid growing up, and I, I, I just felt like I wanted to go see him. I went in, and I tried to talk for a minute, and I tried to say a few words to him, and I, we, we wasn't getting anywhere. And I, I, I wasn't, if anything, I was probably making things worse, probably agitating him and making him worse. And the only thing I knew to do was as I stood there, I said, Preacher Argo, can I pray? Can I pray with you? And folks, do not, do not under any circumstance misunderstand what I'm about to say. It was as close to a miracle as I guess I've ever seen. And I don't take any credit for it. I am not a miracle worker. I didn't whack him in the forehead. I didn't put no water on him. Anything. I just said, can we pray? And it was like someone had flipped a switch. Do not, please hear me, I didn't do anything. I didn't have it in me. I was at my wit's end. It had nothing to do with me. It had everything to do with him and his knowledge and relationship with Jesus Christ. He didn't have anything to do with me. I just happened to be the one standing there that got the privilege of seeing it. Can we pray? And it was as if someone had flipped a switch at the peace and the calm that came over that man. There's something, there's something about that name. There's something about that name. It's a peace that I can't explain it to you. All I can tell you is if you've never experienced it, it's available. Jesus Christ died on a cross. He was born in a manger, but He was born for one reason, to go to a cross. I go back to that song that I mentioned starting out. I don't know how many of you, I think probably many of you, you're familiar with the song. But the words of that song again, He says, I saw... Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, Mark, Luke, and Timothy. And then I, but then I said, I want to see Jesus. And the chorus says this, Then I bowed on my knees and cried holy. Then I bowed on my knees and cried holy. Holy, holy, holy. I clapped my hands and said glory. This morning I want to invite you for just a moment this Christmas season. My folks, it'll be a ball to see Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, Mark, Luke, and Timothy. But I look forward to the day I can bow on my knees and say holy. But you do know you don't have to wait. I want to invite you this morning... You know, there are a lot of things we talk about. I'd like to see Abraham and Isaac and Jacob. But this morning, I want to invite you. You're here today and you know Jesus Christ is your personal Savior. You just want to slip out this Christmas morning, you, this Christmas season. You want to come and kneel at this altar. And you just simply want to say, Lord, I just came to bow and say holy. I didn't come to ask you for a thing. I don't want anything. I don't need anything. I'm not asking for a thing. I just want to come and bow and call you holy. I want to thank you for coming, being born in a manger, and dying on a cross. Don't ask you for a thing. I just want to bow and say glory.
Maybe this morning you are here and you don't know Christ. You don't know this Christ of Christmas that I'm talking about. You need to come and kneel. You need to come this morning and just like those wise men, just like those shepherds and kneel before that Savior and say, Lord, I want to ask you into my heart. I know that if I was to die today, I'd die lost. And I want to ask Jesus Christ to come into my heart. I want to ask Him to save me. I want to ask Him to, to live in me and to forgive me for my sins. Christians want to come and just simply say, Lord, I, I just want to bow. I just want to say, Holy, I didn't come to ask you for a thing. I didn't come to tell you I need a thing. I just want to tell you I love you and say glory. I want to ask you to bow your heads for just one second. As our musicians come. Christians all over this building this morning. God's been good to you. He's given you a great family. He's given you a good place to live. Saved you. And this morning you simply need to come. Kneel at this altar and say, I just want to call you holy. I just want to thank you this Christmas season. You're here today and you don't know Christ. You need to come. Church doors open. You've been saved. You want to come be part of this church family. You won't find a better one. You want to come. Whatever God lays on your heart as we stand together.